All right, so I have the emitter in my hand and I have five blue LEDs. I just want to make sure that I am going to get into the manual mode. But prior to that, I just want to make sure that I have the presets and I go through that again with you. I tap my joystick to the left, lights are off. I tap it again. I get these purple lights and two ends for a brief moment and then I get my preset value. Right now I'm in two blue and two red. This is my preset value. Now, this is not where I want to be. What I want to do is I want to go to the manual mode because this is where you will leave off and go to the manual mode should you fail to get a proper picture. So what I do is I take the cable out, plug the cable back in. I'm going to allow for the blue LEDs to go through its sync cycle and when I get five blue LEDs I do exactly what I did before which is to tap the joystick to the left and I turn the lights off. Now this is where the manual mode is different than the presets. I don't just tap and release the joystick I tap and hold the joystick towards the left side of the emitter. So I take my finger and I tap to the left and I'm holding it. I went from purple to blue and when I get two blues I release. So two blues and then I release and now I am in the manual mode. How do I make certain that I'm in a manual mode is Unlike in the presets where I was setting the blue LEDs, i.e. the left to right LEDs first, in manual mode, I will set up up and down or the red LEDs first. So I look up by pressing the joystick up and holding it up and seeing how my LEDs light up. If they are lighting up, it had gradually, as you can see, one LED is taking three to four to five settings that are visible to the eye, and then they're lighting completely and then moving on to the next. That tells me I am in the manual mode. Once again, I'll take now the joystick, tap it down, and hold it, and I can see, and I hope this is clear, that how the LEDs are shutting off and they're not just shutting off with one single motion but there are multiple settings that are going off and then they move from one to the other. At this point I've shut everything off. Tap again up and I've got a bit of life here in one LED. That means I'm in the manual mode. Now left and right comes after the up and down and instead of those blue LEDs we're seeing we're going to see purple LEDs and they do light up rather quickly not as quickly as the other one there are again some settings as you can see I can I can touch and I can shut them off quicker than the red but if I just tap and release tap and release tap and release I have some values on left and right as well per LED. This is only because this particular method or um, you know, manual mode itself, the mode itself, is robust. It's got lots of values in it and you're bound to find one value, if not more values, that are going to fit your requirements in terms of the television or projector you're trying to set. I am using the same television which I was able to set with the presets. However, I'm going to try to find the value in the manual mode for it. So what I'll do is I'll go up and down and given I was at a very low value of up and down, one LED, I'm going to start from there. And as I see, Kevin, you're with me. <coughs> Pardon me, you're going to help, help me to make sure that I get the right setting for the red LEDs and that would then take me to the purple LEDs and I'll get the purple LEDs the correct number or the correct setting of it and that should get me to lock this particular television. Alright, so as you can see I am 
tapping up and releasing it rather quickly because I want to go through each setting quite carefully and not miss some good settings in between. And so I touch it and I release it and touch it and I release it. And Kevin, tell me when you see a good quality image that you get. Okay. Is this good? A little bit of flicker. How is that? Much better. Okay. Very good. I had suspected we were going to be somewhere around here because of the technology we have. Um, so this is a good setting on a manual level. And then up left and right, I was, I believe I was in a very good position at about one because five is going to give me a loss of flicker, I know. But we can try by going little at a time and tell me, Kevin, when you have seen a very good image, is that is that, am I going in the right direction or am I no, making getting worse? Better, getting better. Getting better. Good. Good? Good. Good image. Yes. Okay. So this one particular um, television actually took four purplish blue LEDs to set correctly. Um, you'll find mostly two to three uh, or even one, 1 1.5. And remember, in this case, you could actually uh, have point, decimal point values as well. As I bring it down, um, I have two here. I can bring it down a little and call this 1.75, call this 1.5, call this 1.25, and call this 1. You know, so there are ways to kind of further define this for someone to say it's not just one LED or two LEDs or three LEDs because you've got lots of values in there, you could really see, well, you know, 1.5, 1.75 means that they're not completely lit, but they are halfway or a bit more than halfway lit, and that would be the right value. And up and down again, I've gone too far, this is the value. So this is a manual mode. Now, once you set this and you feel that you've got the right setting, you could just leave your emitter, and this is a case in the presets as well. You just leave your emitter, and it will store this value. And this particular value is what this emitter is stored at. I can unplug this emitter and plug it back. I can unplug my box. I can redo the whole setup somewhere else. When I first time plug this back, the value that I will have would be this value. So. That's another great feature is you don't need to come back over and over again to set the emitter. Once you've set this up, you're really set to go. The only variation would be is from content to content, if I'm going um, to different contents and moving around from, let's say, uh, player level, if I'm changing from DirecTV to PS3 or to a 3D Blu-ray player, my glasses, do you always remember that I might have to go back to my glasses and press the on off button to get the correct polarity. But the That's emitter it. does default back to the settings that you have. The emitter defaults to the display settings you have. So as long as you're not changing the display, this is the correct setting and you're set. You can leave this setup on completely and have it there regardless of whether you're watching 3D contents or 2D contents. Because if there are 2D contents, the processor, 3D now processor, will pass through 2D contents, as we mentioned that in the other modules, and you will be able to see 2D contents flawlessly as you were viewing them previously before you connected the 3D processor. So there's nothing that needs to be done to this setup. Once it's done, it's complete, and it's in the background. The only thing is your glasses, making sure your glasses are charged and that you are every now and then checking to correct, uh, on your glasses with your on and off button to make sure that the polarity is correct. And that pretty much concludes the entire installation process. This particular process in normal circumstances should take you less than 30 minutes. If you run into any issues or problems, it's important to stop at the module that caused your problem or you didn't get the desired result and look at the FAQ 
that is attached to the module on the website, read those. We have guides, setup guides, checklists, everything on the website. Review that. And of course, the last resource, and um, very importantly, that you can contact us via email or via phone, and someone will be able to guide you through the setup if need be. But it should not take you more than 30 minutes to do this if everything is done properly and the steps are being followed. Um, exceptions to the rules, please contact us. Uh, I would highly recommend that you do so as opposed to spending lots of time trying to go and set this, particularly in the last stages when you do not get the desired results earlier on, because that is really not going to get you the results that you're looking for. It's very, very important that if you, in the module six, seven, eight, if you do not get the results that, that are sought after, then to stop your installation and contact us or look at the FAQs and the guides that have been given to you. Thank you very much for participating and hopefully you are by now enjoying your 3D viewing on a non-3D display with 3D Now processor, Theta 3DN200. Have a wonderful time. Goodbye.